<laughs> All right, so it, it, it seems like uh, we're on air. So once again, uh, welcome to the last PIVO of, of this beautiful year. Uh, thank, thank you all for joining us, for attending. Uh, we have so far four speakers uh, that will be doing the lighting talks. And uh, I think we can start with Honza, right? Would you mind sharing your presentations if you have any? Uh, yeah, I have something prepared. Cool. Not exactly presentation. S <laughs> That's a very fancy word. <laughs> oh. So just tell me when should I start the timer and I will do the beep sound in one minute uh, when, when there's one minute left. Yeah, let me let me set up the sharing. Uh, okay, there's more clicks than I expected. This is the first time I'm doing this. Is it? Firefox will not be able to record the contents of your screen until it is quit. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm recording well, it in, in Google I Chrome. So. In, um, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I'll, yeah. just, I'll just quickly uh, quit it and reopen and let's see how fast it is. And if I disappear and not appear again, uh, uh, proceed without me for a while. But Maybe it's super fast. I'll click the button and I'll appear soon, hopefully. So as a backup, Kayo, are you ready to, to be the first one if, if it doesn't work for Honza? Okay. Good. Uh, so let, let's give him a, a, a minute. Okay. Maybe this we can a... switch. I think Honza saw this lightning talk yesterday in Prague. Oh, there you are. Oh, never mind. <laughs> this will be a great recording. Okay, second try. <laughs> um, present now your entire screen. Entire screen. Yeah, allow. Can you see something? Almost. Yep. Yeah, so yes. now you see the the documents with, yes. with lightning talks. Great. Can you Let's... make it full screen, maybe? Full screen? Why? Fuller. Even fuller. I don't know. Well, if, if OK, well, like this? yeah. Better? Yes. OK, so I guess you can start my time now. All right, and you go. So I want to tell you something about Git scraping. Um, I learned about this technique uh, on this awesome blog of Simon Willison, which is my internet hero. I follow on uh, in in uh, I follow his blog and Twitter and everything. Uh, he is one of the authors of Django, and now he is working on a lot of interesting open source and uh, one. Uh, of the things he's, he, he writes about is Git scraping. And um, this article explains what it is. In short, uh, it's a technique when you uh, write a script, uh, like a Python script, which uh, downloads data from somewhere on the internet, saves it to Git, and commits it. Uh, and you do this um, repeatedly. Uh, so then you have like a history of the data. Uh, basically, from the diffs in the Git, you can see the differences over time. And it's interesting for a certain kind of data. Uh, he wrote another article mentioning it uh, here. And there, uh, there is interesting link to this, uh, to this website. Uh, it's uh, this website. Um, there is a GitHub repository of that website, so you can see how it's made and so on. And it's a website about uh, counting votes uh, of American elections. And it's made uh, exactly on top of this technique. Uh, the data is, is uh, pulled by a Python script, uh, and then uh, it actually makes uh, some evaluation of the uh, of the 
of the of how the data evolves so it actually can read the git diffs uh, semantically and uh, kind of like uh, tell you what the difference is and, and how it evolved from i don't know five seconds uh, before so this is this is uh, like using this technique uh, like really in in a very very intense way but usually uh, it it's enough to do something simpler I tried to play with this. This is not a serious project, but only something I, I tried. Uh, and I want to show you uh, as my like uh, little hobby project and as an inspiration what you can do. Uh, it's called Czech Political Parties. I noticed uh, in news that it's sometimes interesting for the for the for the like journalists to basically monitor changes in the in the political parties registry. And uh, I wrote a, a Python script which downloads data from the uh, political registry. Uh, it's public, it doesn't have API, it's terrible, but it wasn't that hard to pull the data from that if you're experienced in scraping. And I made a JSON of data uh, with, with that information. And uh, that looks like this. Uh, it's not all data from the registry, but it's not important. And um, there is a GitHub action, which uh, regularly, uh, basically all it does is it installs Python, uh, then it removes the old data and runs the script and then commits the new data back to the, to the history. And then it looks something like this. If you see the commits, there are these updates. And if you click on some of the updates, you can find things like uh, here they uh, they removed Jaroslav Faltinek from Ano as a as a Mr. Předseda, sorry, <laughs> as a, removed him from the board or whatever it is. Here you can see that uh, list Jaromira Soukupa is not active anymore. It, uh, that's interesting information or that there is a new party and so on. It's made on a, on Scrapey framework. I recommend that. And um, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to tell you and uh, how I wanted to inspire you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Hansa. That, that, that was extremely interesting. I think I, I, I've read about that uh, on, on your blog maybe, is that possible? I, yeah, I, I saw that somewhere recently. Um, I'm there... excited about it, so I share it all over the place. So it's possible you've seen it somewhere, uh, thanks to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <Are> there... <laughs> no worries, no worries. Um, I, I tend to forget things anyway, so uh, it's good I, I, I remember this. Um, are there any questions from anyone on, on, on the call? I'll share the, the links. Yep. I'll maybe, maybe what would be a good thing uh, is if you uh, maybe add it to to the, uh, the oh, lighting yeah. document. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. So I'll post it here and there as well. And yeah, when I started, I'll finish. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, are there any any specific data needed or a specific format so you can do this magic? Is it? Uh, is it basically you can uh, you can do it with any data which is uh, which is uh, easy to read in the diff. The diff is mm -hmm. line based, so. Uh, there are some tricks you can uh, you should employ like uh, some uh, like it's good to sort the data because you usually download it and it can be like mixed uh, order and for for example i have the people in the parties the important people there and uh, the people weren't sorted so if uh, the roles changed but the people did not it was all like uh, ugly diff. so i had to sort them by name or something like that so it's good to do that and also to format the data 
in a way that it's uh, well readable by humans. So like I could just dump the JSON there on one line, but that wouldn't be very useful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so but but it can be it can be a CSV JSON whatever works. The JSON reads pretty well. Uh, I don't know, but it's it's my early experiments. Yeah, I've seen I've seen like uh, the, the Simon documents uh, occurrences of this technique. So you can find links to things like um, um, a list of um, um, like mm, not bushfires, but but fires in California or something like that. And um, yeah, he, he monitors all sorts of things. He's like uh, this data uh, geek. <laughs> Good. Great. Any any other question? All right. So the next one would be Kaya. So I hope it will it will work. Yeah, this the, the present button is in bottom yeah. right. Yeah. Mm. Like this, and let's see. Right, looks like we see something. Is it okay? Yeah, looks great. So again, uh, five minutes. You tell me when to start the timer, and at one minute left, I will do the beep sound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. So so, let's start. All right, you can start now. So so, I am today. I I will. I will talk about a Twitter account, which I write with Petr Šimeček, who's also here on, in Pivo. And we are doing it for like more than three years. And I want to, I want to tell you about how it started, what are we writing about and who are our followers and about our tweets and about some future, future plans. So what, what we are writing, we are writing different different kinds of, of, of tweets there are some uh, often often things for example about pandas because uh, uh, both both of us deal deal with the data so so it's our our daily job there are some 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 tweets about our weekends projects for example here is a word cloud about the poem my and there are some funny, funny things like like um, reversing of things or re reversing of strings or um, emoji about tweets about emojis and how it's how it started. Uh, it was in in 2017. I was in Prague and Petris was working in in the United States and uh, we are like wanted some things to do together. So so let's do some online course on on deep learning or start a start a music music group which which wasn't so so good idea because uh, i i cannot play any instrument so 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 let's join french foreign legion but uh, we then we found out that we are too old for that then okay let's write something like uh, shiny for python which is something like um, easy way to to do web apps and dashboards in r and but when when we when we started it uh, then, then then plotly came with dash and okay our, our job was over so let's do something like one r tip a day uh, but for python because at the, at the time we were both using r so and starting to learn python so let's try that so we we uh, at the time we really didn't know no python so so every every tweet was new new for us and we we are writing okay there, there's a word class for, from our tweet so so you can see that there's sort of things about pandas and jupyter notebook and uh, lambda functions or so on and who who are our followers you can you can see there are, there are people for, from 
uh, from United States, from, from Europe. There are quite a lot of followers from, from India and we, we are thinking that uh, they don't mind our, our English. So, so that's why they are following us. And now after, after three years, we know some Python, but okay, there are not so, so many new things we, we want to, we, we think about, we, we, we think we want to tweet about. So, so we are, we were looking, uh, looking about on our tweets and to, we want to see how, how, what's, how, how to make a, a favorite, favorite tweet. Uh, and we a popular tweet, and we 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 could see that uh, uh, for one red tweet there are approximately like four four likes, and so we define some popularity score like four four retweets plus Beep. likes. Beep. One minute. So so and uh, you can see that uh, that the end here is uh, in lock, and. Uh, as we as we have uh, like not so not so many followers in the first year, it, the, the, the tweets warrants ha didn't have so so many likes, and I, I want to show you that the, the tweets uh, that uh, are most favorite. It's it's uh, these uh, funny things about Unicode strings, and yeah, you can be surprised about that. Uh, then the, there are some things about LaTeX rendering uh, of uh, in Jupyter notebook and some emojis so i think i think i will because i have only one minute skip this and yeah uh we were we were like we were found that uh, the favorite tweet will we have an emoji will be short will be about pandas will be about jupyter notebook their surprising thing was that there won't be any any image uh, there won't be any link it will be yeah and now now for our future plans we want to make a book of uh, the best best of python tip and that's that's the time we want to ask you for for help and we we prepared uh, some like pytips evaluator it's uh, it will choose uh, 25 random tweets and you can you can say which is the which you like the most and yeah, we will be happy if if you if you if you help help us. And here's here's a link. Bitly Diki Zapomots. And I think I will post it also to the chat. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kaya. Uh, can you maybe uh, link the, the presentation to the um, to the Lightning Talk document? Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course. Thank Great. You. So, so if if I got it correctly, uh, I mean, uh, one of the last slides you are trying to find out which tweets are the most popular or understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we we wrote the tweets, so so yeah, it's like this is my favorite tweet because it's uh, about pandas. But someone won't uh -huh. like it so much, so so we want to we want to we want other people to 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 say i like this one and this is a totally stupid thing so like this and also if you if you can understand or not because if if it's if there are some beginners and it could be maybe too too difficult or it won't make sense in, because yeah yeah there's a, some character limits on tweets so 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 basically gathering feedback and tr yeah, trying yeah. to identify your, your audience so you can yeah, maybe yeah. tailor the, the tweets. Do you, yeah, do you yeah, get yeah. A, a lot of responses on Twitter, a lot of comments in general? Uh, for, the, for, the, for the book? For the tweets. Or for the tweets. Yeah, quite, quite. There are quite some, some tweets. Good. Some That's great. Tweets. Yeah. Okay. Any, any questions from the attendees of the call? Quite a quiet audience today, all right? <laughs> okay, thank you once again. Thank you. Uh, Petjo, are you ready or not yet? Well, I don't think I'll be more ready in the future. Nikki, you can always make things better 
but at some point you just need to stop and yes <laughs> do the talk so uh, so is it 10 uh, minutes for you or uh yeah uh i don't think i'll fit in five minutes that's i could have but i didn't uh put in the time to shorten the, the talk so let's see if this allows me to share my screen nope an error has occurred when screen sharing Ooh. let's troubleshoot <laughs> okay how do you troubleshoot a google web app it doesn't tell me anything so you, you can't present it the the, the usual way it, it doesn't work for you right uh let's see let's see don't you have any ad blocks or script no scripts or you know aren't you the paranoid animal the same as me i am but i'm in the google context where all of google's is enabled and i don't see any any blocker blocking anything I just see uncaught exceptions in uh, minified JavaScript in the console. Uh, so let me uh, try something else. For these cases, I usually have like a backup browser, which I don't use at all, but I use it when everything fails. Yes, I have that too, and it's automatically set to private mode as well. So let me try that, and I'll, I hope I'll be back soon. And during the first two lightning talks, I realized that what I have prepared is definitely not a lightning talk. <laughs> I'm sorry in advance for that, but I will probably take more than five minutes, as I've already mentioned. And we will see. If if it will be boring, you can just boo and I will go to sleep, you know. And Peter's back. <laughs> you gave your heads up in the beginning. You said you will talk and talk and talk. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Oh, cool. Now it works. Can you see something? Yep. So this is... Uh... The size of my text, I uh, can't make it bigger. If uh, you can't see it, then make the window bigger. Looks okay to me. All right. Can I start? Yes, since you have no timer. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, take all my time. So uh, you can see a program here that uh, calculates something useful. Uh, it's a toy program that uh, gives you solutions to this quadratic equations, which means a bit of math. Uh, the math is not very important. You can see it's almost Python, but it's not quite uh, Python. If I uh, if I run it, there's a syntax error here. So this is a language similar to Python. And what I would like to do here is explain how Python turns a piece of text like this into instructions that it can then then follow. So. This will be my main example for the lightning talk. I'll make it a uh, uh, text a string and see how to parse this, how to uh, turn this into something we can evaluate. Uh, so this is something you would learn at the university. If there are any people who remember recursive descent parsers, uh, well, this might not be that useful for you, uh, or you might learn something new about how Python does this, which is, um, this is very simplified, but uh, might learn something new. So let's go. I will need some imports. Those are not very important. Uh, some standard libraries, some stuff I, I wrote. And the first thing we need to do with this piece of text is tokenize it. What does tokenizing mean? I'll not spend too much time on it. It means turning this into individual pieces, individual, you could say, words that uh, that will then uh, combine back together. So if I run this, I can see uh, that on line one, there is a token called new line. It starts with a new line. 
and there's a comment we skip that uh there's a couple more new lines and then the token starts so the first line gets turned into a equals one new line for tokens the second and third are very similar this one is a bit more uh interesting because there's a lot going on but basically you can see uh the variable name gets in, turned into one token and there's one token for each piece and also each token has a kind uh, a type uh, which will be important later so here we see that uh, some things are numbers some things are name uh, some things are uh, operators the next line very similar uh, you can see that I have a special token type for if, special token type for this error thing you don't really see in Python. Uh, and on the next, next line, you'll see I also have a special token type for the square root function, uh, which, of course, Python doesn't really do, but it's here for simplification. So uh, that's for... Oh, uh, and at the end, there's a token for end of file, so we know that the... Uh, the file start uh, ended. Uh, this is uh, not something I wanted to talk about, so I'll not go, go into details. Uh, and just you need to know that you know we're uh, dealing with this token stream, with this uh, sequence of tokens. What kinds of tokens we have, I can print out for you. Uh, we have new line if. Uh, the function we're using, error, name, number, and operator. There's not too many uh, types of tokens we're, we'll work with. So before we t turn to this beast, let me uh, do a smaller example. Uh, let's try to parse the program A equals 1, which is the first line here. And... Uh, what we need to parse something is a grammar, a description of uh, what a program will look like. So in this case, we have some name equals some number. How do we parse this? Parse this. The, let's call this a simple assignment. We need the stream of tokens for this, and we'll read a name. Uh, we'll need this operator. So that's a token called op, and we want it to be uh, an equal sign. And then we call, uh, then we uh, read a number. Right? token stream and whoops what we get from this is uh, two tokens this isn't very useful let me get the uh, text from each token and you can see that we get the information in this program returned from this parse function what is even uh, uh, like what we'll need to do afterwards is not just get a tuple of two things, but have some kind of information of, you know, this being an assignment. So basically we want a structure like this. This is an assignment which has the left side, the uh, variable A, and the right side, which is the number one. Uh, and all these three pieces of information need to be uh, present. So let me do it like this. I have a special uh, library with uh, containers for this kind of data structure. And uh, basically here, uh, I get something that looks like A equals one. If I wanted to print it a little better, uh, let's, I can dump it like this, right? This is a simple assignment. Uh, that assigns number one to the name A. I hope that's making sense. Uh, if you're saying something, I can't hear you. 
Uh, so the next thing I want to do is uh, parse one plus two, which is an addition. Again, it'll look something like this, addition of one plus two. For this, we'll have a grammar which is very similar to this one. Uh, this will be simple, simple addition. Number plus number. Right, uh, it's not uh, not that uh, different from what we have later. There's a number. The operator is a plus, and uh, it's not a simple assignment, but we'll call it a binary operation, and it needs two numbers. And let's see what comes out. Uh, Oh, right. There's one thing I want to do. Uh, I don't want just numbers here because we can have more complicated expressions here. So what I'll do is uh, call this left and right. And then I'll have left node and kind of wrap this number around in something that uh, something a little more structured. So this will be a node like the binary operation. I'll call it number, and I'll do the same thing for the right, and I just rename stuff, so uh, this will be left node and right node. Let's see, where is my error? Oh, I, this also needs to be a plus. So. Uh, my node will be represented as one plus two. If I want to print it out a little more structured in a little more structured way, it's a binary operation that has on the left side the number one, it's a plus, and on the right side the number two. Right, and from this, uh, you know, we can write code to add these two numbers. Uh, I've actually written code that. Uh, evaluates this expression and uh, you know if for binary operation plus it adds the two numbers together so we get three so this is turning something like this into a program we can uh, we can evaluate if I change the program here uh, the result also changes right uh, now I would like to do something more interesting and that is uh, allow either this or a simple number like this. You know, this was also a valid uh, thing in my, uh, in my language, and I would like to deal with that. So an addition would be either this or just a number, not really addition. Uh, so what I do for that is I try to read this operator. So I have a function called try read. Uh, which will look at the next token that's coming in. And if it is something that matches this, uh, then uh, it will uh, return true. Otherwise, it'll not do anything, right? So I will only do the binary operation if uh, we have a plus here. So this part is optional. Otherwise, I will just return the left node. Uh, so for one, I have a, a simple number with value one. I do a different value, uh, you know, it parses correctly. If I add plus three, then I get a more complicated structure and the result is correct, right? I can do more now. I can extend this to uh, more uh, things being added. How do I do this? I can repeat this part. Instead of it being optional, zero or one times, I'll say it can be repeated zero or more times. That's uh, formally uh, notated as this. How will I do this? Uh, instead of an if, I will have a true, uh, a loop while true. Uh, if a plus is coming, uh, then I uh, read something and then I cannot return 
but I'll get this binary operation and assign it to left node. Uh, let me make this a bit simpler. So what I have here is uh, 10 plus 3 plus 4. So let's do here 10 plus 3 plus 2. So instead of uh, 1 being here, I have another addition that adds 10 plus 3, right? And uh, this can get more complicated, uh, or it can get less complicated. Uh, and with this simple ground rule, I can I can do as many additions as possible. And you can also see the parsing function follows the grammar quite closely. Right. For the next step, I'll try to parse a program like this. Uh, it will uh, add, uh, it will set three variables. Uh, so for this, my grammar will be, uh, the simplest sign will be the same as before. And now I have a program which can, uh, which consists of uh, some statements, right? It can have the simple assigned uh, zero or more times. The assignments are followed by new line. There can also be a new line by itself. And at the end of the program, there needs to be an end of file. So how do I do this? Uh, I will need a list of uh, statements. And then I have a loop, and I have to uh, see what is coming up? So the most uh, easy case to uh, to handle is uh, the end of file case. So in that case, I return a new program node with the statements that I've collected. Right? If if it's just end of file, then there the statements are empty. If I have a new line. then uh, I don't do anything. The new line is read, and I continue on with the token stream. And this should really be an else if. Uh, otherwise, I parse a simple assignment, so name equals number. And this is a function I've defined to, uh, here, right? And that gives me a node. Uh, after the simple assignment, there is a new line. So I need to uh, read one more new line and append this statement to these statements. And that's it. This will loop through all the statements and end at end of file. Uh, so let's see how it does. Uh, see, I have uh, all the nodes. If I want to be a little bit more verbose, I can print it like this. This is a program whose statements are simple assignment, simple assignment, simple assignment. Uh, and this doesn't really return a value. So instead of this eval I had here, uh, I have a slightly different con function called exec that will tell me what variables are, uh, are set, right? So there's a dictionary of variable values. And each of these statements, when it's executed, sets one of them. So at the end of this program, the variables will look like this. And if that's clear, we can move on to the big example at the start. So let's put it in this window here so we can see it. Uh, this will, the grammar for this will be a bit more complicated. So the program is the same as before, except it consists of statements, which can be either if statements or assignments, or the error statement. Uh, 
uh, like this one. An assignment is an expression after which uh, there is uh, an optional uh, optional equals another expression. I don't know why well, it made it optional, but well, okay. There's an expression equals another expression, like C equals two, or discriminant equals this big mess. An expression is made of terms. So these are terms separated by either plus or minus. A term is made of uh, atoms separated by uh, star or slash. And atoms are either names, variable names, or numbers, or an expression in parentheses, or a special call of the square root function, which looks like this, which says square root uh, and expression in parentheses. And the last thing here is the if statement, which goes like this. If expression, uh, I cheated a little bit here, uh, is smaller than another expression, then we have a statement, right? Uh, this is a grammar in so-called EBNF format, which is an actual format used for real grammars. If you look at the Python grammar uh, in uh, Python 3.8, you can see that it is exactly this thing, except mine is a little bit simpler. How do you parse this? Uh, the program is uh, basically the same thing as we had before. Uh, the statement is a little bit more interesting because you have to choose uh, which choice of these uh, to pick. So if the next uh, token coming up is an error, that's obviously this thing. So let's return an error in, this, in that case. Uh, and then I can see that the if statement always begins with an if, and an assignment can never begin with an if. So this is uh, the complicated thing when, when designing parsers in this manner, uh, is seeing which option can start with what, and each option has to start with uh, different uh, possibilities. If assignment could start with if, I wouldn't know which option to take here. Uh, this is what's called an LL1 parser, which means it can always look only at the next token coming up. It can't look forward and it can't backtrack or move back in the program, uh, which makes things simpler uh, for the parser, but more complicated when designing a grammar like this. Uh, so if I have an if coming next, I don't want to read the if, because that's part of the it's if statement. So I'll just use a match, which looks at the next token, but doesn't actually read it. And in that case, uh, I'll parse an if statement. Uh, otherwise, I will parse an assignment. Right. If, uh, if I try to run this, I'll see that parse an assignment is not defined. So how do I parse an assignment? I can see my grammar is uh, not visible anymore. Let's so let me move it to this screen. And I still fit. So parsing an assignment is very similar to we have what we had before. So I'll just copy it from my notes. Uh, you can see we have an optional uh, equals after it. Uh, as for the expression, which uh, looks like this, we have to parse a term. And then this part, uh, basically, we had before with the addition. Uh, so while true. If the next token coming up is a plus, then uh, I parse uh, a term and assign back to this expression so I can have the tree like we had with the addition. The same thing is with the minus. 
And if there's neither a plus or a minus, then we're at the end and we can return the uh, expression we have so far. So if I run this, I see parse term is not defined. So that would be for this rule. Uh, and parse term is very, very similar to parse expression. So I'll just copy that from my notes. Uh, there's just a, a few different words, otherwise it's the very same function. If I run this, I see parse atom is not defined. That's this rule, which is very simple. Uh, let's see, if the next token is uh, parentheses, that's probably the uh, most uh, uh, complex case. I, oh, uh, I parse an expression and read the closing parentheses and return this result. Uh, otherwise, if uh, there's a number coming up, I return a number. We already saw that. If there's a name coming up, I parse it as a variable reference. If there's a square root, this one coming up, then I parse it as square root. And if neither of these cases is coming up, then we raise a syntax error. Okay, I run that. Uh, I see I don't have parse if statement, which is this one. And that is very easy. There's no choices in here. I just read stuff in order and put it in a node like this. And the last thing is this square root, which uh, is also quite easy. So let me just uh, paste that from my notes as well. And I see I have uh, success now. So if I try to write out what, uh, what's the result of this, it will be very complicated because it's quite a, quite a long program. I have an image here of what this parse tree will look like. If I can zoom out. So it's basically like this. So you have some assignments at first. Then there's a very complex expression that uh, sets the discriminant variable. Then there's an if, which is basically a parse tree also. And then more assignments. Right. So the same thing we have before, just a lot more complex. Uh, if I print this out, this is how I can convert this structure back into text. You can see that all the expressions are parenthesized uh, because here the parentheses can be added in or removed in some cases and doesn't change the meaning of the program. Uh, but otherwise, it looks very similar. And if I run this, I get uh, these variables, the discriminant, and then x1 would be 3.414, x2 would be 0 0.585. Let's see if that checks out. Here's my calculator. a equals 1, b equals minus 4, c equals 2. What is ax squared plus bx plus c. And I see these numbers check out. So my program is correct, and my parser is correct as well. Uh, this is actually how the first parser for Python was written, back when the grammar wasn't all that, uh, all that complicated. Then they switched to something with a little bit more performance. Uh, and in Python 3.9, they actually switched to a whole different technology that is not limited by the fact that the parser can only look ahead one token at a time. If you're interested in that, then you should read uh, Guido's uh, blog post series about coming up with a new parser. And this talk was actually uh, uh, supposed to give you all the knowledge you need to read these blog posts. So if you're, if you're interested, uh, if what I said made sense, then 
uh, you can go ahead and read uh, Guido's notes on the new way the things are done. And uh, that's it for me. That was more than 10 minutes, right? I think it was like 15 to 20. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I usually, I know that usually you are able to, to do a lightning talk in five. So that's, that's just all right, I guess. <sighs> Thanks for yeah. the talk. Um, uh, I, I would again uh, like to ask you to, to paste, if, if there's anything you can paste actually, because I see that there was no presentations or something like that. So maybe the, the Guido's uh, 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 blog post, you can maybe paste it to, yeah, oh, I see you already. So there. these are all the links I will, I had open in my browser. So I'll just yeah. paste um, that. I'll just I'll just paste the the link to Lightning Talks uh, with all the links uh, to the chat again. In the meanwhile, are there any questions from the attendees? Impressions, comments. Yes, good. Tom, would you like to speak or? Well, not yet. Maybe if you try to unmute yourself. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah, let's let's try in the chat. No worries. Chat. Okay. Can you see the parse atom uh, function? This one. Mm -hmm. No, maybe I should rearrange this for the order they appear. How does it know when to parse the? ending parentheses well that's because the expression uh basically cannot have a parentheses uh well it doesn't have a parentheses right so the expression is uh well there's a term oh how it how can it be nested well for each opening parenthesis there is always one closing one Right, so when you see a closing parenthesis, uh, that uh, is the end of this one expression. Uh, let's maybe uh, see. Uh... So if I don't have discriminant here, but uh, a different variable name. And I put in uh, an error. So when it comes to this point, it uh, raises a trace back. So what this is doing is parsing the program, the statement inside it. So this whole thing, uh, which is an assignment, and it's parsing an expression inside that, a term inside that, uh, which is probably this, an atom inside that, which is this in parentheses, uh, and so on and so on and so on. So you can use, so you can see this is done in a recursive manner. The functions calling each other. Uh, and basically, the only thing that reads parentheses here is uh, Adam and square root. And each one, when it reads an opening one, mm -hmm. then it also gets the closing one. Right? So if there's many uh, closing parentheses uh, left over, uh, they're left for, for earlier. Uh, invocations of the function. Does that make sense? Oh, it does. Great. Forgot you were chat only. Good. Any, any other question?
All right, thanks. I'll put this on GitHub and put a link on GitHub also. So if you want to see the code, like what the AST structures look like and stuff like that, then uh, check back later. Thank you, Peter. Thanks. Um, we have one last speaker for the for those that that just joined. Uh, if you want to tell us something Python related, any any lightning talk, uh, uh, we'd be happy. Just just write in the chat, I guess, or in in the document I pasted in the chat. And I guess Lumir can prepare. Are you still with us, Lumir? Yeah, I am. That's a good thing. All right. Are you ready? And you will be surprised, but the screen sharing doesn't work. <laughs> no, really. I give it one more try. <laughs> I'll, I'll be I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay. Looks like today's screen sharing is cursed. Oh, looks like it works now. We can't hear you. Yeah, Lumir. <laughs> okay, Sorry, can you see my presentation? Yeah. Yep. We can also Perfect. see you and hear you. That's an awesome combination, I had to admit. Uh, so, I have this prepared in check, which means that I'm able to fit almost 20 slides into five minutes because I'm from Austria, you know? But now, because I realize that I have to do it in English, it might be a little bit longer. So I apologize for that, but I probably won't be the longest presentation today, yeah. tonight. Just don't worry about the time, it's okay, I think, at yeah, this point. I would say so. <laughs> so the topic of my presentation is how to get the best or how to start 2021 in the best way possible. And it's based, based on, I would say, tips and tricks I gathered uh, recently from various books, sources, and some other stuff. So, okay, let's start. First question you have to ask yourself, uh, and Christmas is a great opportunity to do that, uh, what do you want to do? I mean, in general, what do you want to do in 2021? What do you want to learn? What do you want to start to be good at, and so on and so on? And when I'm saying, what do you want to do? I'm saying, what do you want to do? Not what others want you to do. So I don't want to hear stuff like, um, I need to finish that work for that person and this work for that person and so on and so on. Just focus on what do you want to do and take a paper and you know write it down. It's best way. And every time you realize that you want to try something, learn something, do something, be good at something, write it down on a paper. And when you have a little bit of time, use uh, something called Eisenhower metrics. This is really, really a good way how to sort your stuff and how to realize what's really important for you. And you can use it on a day-to-day -day basis, but even try and even start to use it, using Eisenhower metrics is a very good way uh, how to improve your time management because you realize that a lot of things are urgent, a lot of things that are, uh, are important, but the combination, it's not that usual. So you have some urgent stuff and you have some important stuff. If something is urgent and important, do it now. It means that the importance means that you want to do it or you somehow have to do it. And the urgency means that you need or have to do it now. So if something is important and urgent, do it now. If something is important but not urgent, schedule a time to do it. And I mean, really schedule a time to do it. For example, if you want to be better at playing a guitar, or in my case, drums, or you want to spend some time with your family, that's something which is, which is really important, but 
not that urgent, you know? You can practice tomorrow, right? It's, it's not urgent at all, but you have to schedule the time to do it. And it's, it's awesome. Also, uh, work-related stuff are usually important, but not urgent. And nobody should expect reply on an email in minutes or hours. So it can wait. And then we have the red, red squares uh, with urgent stuff, but not that important. So you don't want to basically do that. But it's urgent and it has to be done probably for somebody else so you can delegate it. Just find somebody who can do it for you. And if something is not important for you and not urgent, just delete it. Eliminate it. It's nothing to waste your time on entirely. So just uh, it's not full time management workshop here. I have only a uh, little bit more than five minutes. Uh, so it's not just it's not full time management workshop here, but if you write your stuff you want to do in 2021 on a piece of paper, try to fit those tasks or wishes to the Eisenhower metrics. It will, it will help you a lot, trust me. From my point of view, I have some outcomes already using the technique. Uh, the things that seems to be urgent are usually not and freely can wait. As I said, if you receive an email, it's tempting to reply immediately, but then you can realize that you already spent 20 minutes just thinking what to reply or finding the best wording possible. So even uh, the re and reply to an email might look as a quick task and you should do it right now. It's not urgent, so it can wait. Uh, going to work, especially if you work from home, don't doesn't have to be the first thing you do in the morning. It's, I know, it might be important, you know, you need money and you need to do some kind of job, but there are a lot of things that are much, much important that, that going to, to work, going to office, sit, sit in front of your computer and just start coding for your employer. I mean, from my perspective, I'm going to run, I'm going for a run every morning and I prepare healthy food every morning and I also read uh, books every morning before I go to the office because after that like today I you know uh, ended in the office around 6 p.m. it's already dark outside and I don't have mental energy to read uh, complex books like uh, letters write by stoic from Seneca it's really hard to read book is really big and complex so I need kind of fresh mind to do that what I'm trying to say going to work is important but it's probably not the most important thing in your life a lot of things can do somebody else it's just a matter of asking a lot of times and good uh, outcomes or good results in your work it are probably very important or very important but a lot of things are much more important so you can create basically a whole new routine for everyday life because you can do what's really important for you before you do stuff what it's important for somebody else so how to start usually 2021 or any other year starts but making a new habits i would like to eat healthy and i would like to be better and push ups and have big arms and i would like to eat more water uh, drink more water and so on and so on how to create uh, easily new habits the best way to doing it is to connect the old habits to the to the new habits to the old ones it's awesome you will be surprised if you want to be better and push ups uh, just find a good good old habit you have for example in my case is preparing a tea or coffee or going to the toilet or so on and so on and stick the new habit on top of it i mean every time i'm going to prepare my cup of tea i do a 10 to 15 push-ups because why not i have three minutes before you know my time is ready uh, my tea is ready so why not use it this way? If you want to uh, start learning a new language like Duolingo or similar stuff, do it every time you do something else. And the old habit might be a good one or a bad one. So if you are out smoking a cigarette, that's definitely a bad habit. But you can use it the time also for something good, like you know, uh, browsing through Duolingo. So 
the best way of creating a new habit is to connect them with old ones because it kind of automates automates the stuff in life. How to learn new things? Uh, the best way how to learn something new is to start with teaching. So if uh, let me start with something general, probably all of you know, but uh, if you want to learn something new about Python, you should definitely join PyLadies. And if to, if you want to learn something more advanced in Python, you should definitely join PyLadies. But if it's something completely different, the best way how to teach, how to learn is to teach. Uh, let me explain it in a Feynman technique, which is very good. It's four points. Uh, you should choose what you want to, uh, what you want to learn. Uh, you should try to explain the basic concepts to your friend because when you will start to explain the basic concept to your friend, uh, the friend, if he or she will be listening to, uh, will probably start asking, which will help you to identify the empty spaces in your understanding the topic you choose to learn. And then the step number four, to try to fill those space. So you will constantly uh, be better and better in the topic and you will constantly uh, can teach it to somebody else and it works very very well if i start teaching something new i do understand let's say i have better understanding than my students and my students are you know my friends also so uh, they really help me to go deeper to the topic so it might sound silly but the best way to learn something new is to start teaching somebody else how to not Overcomplicate stuff. How to not die working? That's that's. I don't know how to translate it in English. Honestly, uh, you should plan your future. You should re review your past, and you should keep everything outside your head. Trust me. Three very different parts. You should plan your future every single day. The best way you can do for you and for, for uh, you tomorrow is to schedule your day day before. The best thing is that if I go to work and I know that my to-do list is already prepared for what I have to do today, because otherwise, uh, and it really helps your morning routine because I can freely uh, read the book, prepare food, prepare tea, go for a run and so on, because I don't have to think about what I will do in my job because it's already scheduled from the previous day. This is really, really awesome. Also, you don't have to fill your to-do list to, from the bottom to the top. It's uh, much, much better if you have uh, a few tasks for each day and then if you complete all of them, you can choose something, something else, something more then if you have uh, too many tasks scheduled in advance and then you don't make it and you have to postpone all those tasks the next day and you know it's like a snowball so you end uh, your week by working in the weekend and it's really bad so i'm usually using uh, rule six plus six which means that every evening i schedule six tasks for work and six tasks for my personal life, just things I have to do outside. I am also a firefighter, so usually some stuff around that. And that's it, just six plus six. It's 12, uh, 12 tasks for a day, and it works very well for me. So, and you might think that uh, it's not enough, just six plus six, that won't work, and I will feel that I'm not, I'm not using my, uh, you know, not not using my potential fully that but that's not true and that's uh covered by the third point you should review because every time you think you don't doing enough and you should do more and you should schedule not six plus six but ten plus ten and make a day longer and don't waste my time uh, preparing tea or reading complex book and so on and so on every time you have that feelings or have that thought you should review in your to-do list what you have done and it's awesome because you realize that just 12 tasks per day it's around 80 tasks per week and it's really really lot so uh, reviewing your past is also very very important and the i would say the most important thing of these three is 
don't hold anything in your head. You probably know the situation when you're going somewhere by the public transport and your brain finally has some time to relax and your brain reminds you, oh, you have out of milk home. That, that's a bad, right? But you are in the middle of a bus or tram or Shalina if you're in Bra. You cannot do anything about that. You cannot just, you know, go out from bus and buy some milk and carry the milk uh, with you to pub to pivo and so on. It doesn't make really sense. So if if uh, your brain reminds you that you need to buy some milk, write it down somewhere, a piece of paper to some application with the list, write it down. And then if you go to shop, take a look on the list of paper when you write it all the, you know, things you need to you need to buy and this is it for everything if you have amazing idea that's great but don't waste your time and your brain energy right now write it down to your so-called inbox and you can think about it later if you have amazing idea what to buy for christmas for your girlfriend or boyfriend or kids and so on don't keep it in your head you will forget you will forget i'm 100 percent sure you will forget and your brains will your brain will remind you exactly when the time when there is nothing to do about it so nothing keeping nothing in your head how to not get mad all all of this stuff you should mix your tasks and i mean uh, if you schedule your six plus six routine for next day make sure that the those tax tasks are mixed in a way that for example from my point of view if I have to do something on firefighter station, then it means that I will walk there. So don't schedule only tasks which uh, on computer. You need computer to finish them. Uh, you know, uh, take some uh, when you need to call somebody, when you go, need to go to post office, when you need to go shopping and so on and so on. Just mix them so you won't spend the whole day in front of computer. Resting and especially sleeping is extremely important. I mean, you you probably can spend a week. Actually, I tried it. Uh, I, I tried to limit sleep as much as possible. It's called uh, Uberman, which you uh, which means that you sleep every four hours, but only for twenty or thirty minutes. And I managed to keep that line for 10 days, which means I was able to work the whole day, whole night. It was kind of weird because I was painting my, my flat in the middle of the night and I realized that I'm out of paint and I want to go shop, but not no shop with, uh, with colors have opened in 4 a.m. in the morning. That was kind of weird, but it's not, not a good idea. Trust me, I tried and it's not a good idea. So uh, resting and especially sleeping, it's, it's very important. So uh, try to measure it try to turn off your alarm for a week or two and, and and see what your body needs if you will sleep seven hours eight hours nine ten hours it's okay because your body probably need that amount of time of resting so then you can then you can uh, schedule your sleep time interval by going to bed earlier or waking up uh later and so on and so on just follow your body and also whatever is good for your body and your soul i mean your personal uh, development your body development your healthy eating and so on it's not waste of time if you think that preparing healthy food reading uh, complex spiritual books or going for a run or just for a walk with your dog it's a waste of time. It's not because it will keep you running for a long time. And if you, for example, I'm working for Red Hat and our managers know that it's it's a good idea to rest from time to time. So we have uh, recharge days, which means that we have uh, one day per quarter to spend whatever we want to, usually sport or work or some, something else. We have uh, learning days, which means also one day per quarter, I think, uh, and we can spend that day just learning something new, which means that we can do something good for our body and also something good for our uh, brains and so on and so on. So whatever makes you better person, makes you better, healthier and so on, it's really good for you and it's definitely not a waste of your time.
if you want to help, if you have any problems with time management, prioritization, or stuff around, I'm really interested into that topic. And I'm trying to not just learn a lot of popular books and read a lot of popular books, but I'm just trying to interconnect all, all and the whole knowledge I have also with some old stuff like the book I mentioned from Seneca uh, together. So I'm probably might be able to help you or answer your question or give some advice how I do that. So feel free to ask, feel free to ping me. Uh, and that's basically all. I hope you will start your 2021 as best as you can. And you will, you know, in this uncertain and hard times, you will get as much positive from it as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Lumir. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that I picked this as, 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 as the last talk. And I'm quite sure that most of us knows most of uh, these things. Uh, the question is if we really, well, do it in the end. And uh, well, I do not say that often, but this was really inspirational. Uh, I hate the word, by the way, but uh, I, I really, really like this. So thanks for this. Uh, before I start asking uh, or, or commenting, uh, does anyone have any any questions on 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 uh, on this talk? I have. Hello, Lumir. It's nice to see you again after a long time. <laughs> but that's not a question. My question is: uh, Did you think about having a blog where you would write on these topics if you're so deep into them and you read all the books and so on, and kind of like uh, simplify them? for people who don't have to read books yet <laughs> uh, uh, in such a nice way as you did uh, in, in this uh, almost lightning talk? I, I, I did. I have to admit I did. But honestly, there is so, so much content on the internet, so much uh, people tweeting about those topics, so much people, uh, you know, preparing videos on YouTube. Uh, writing blog posts i honestly i would rather became part-time or kind of mentor to help person directly than writing content on the internet and hoping that somebody will read those i i'm not saying that writing content on the internet is bad it's definitely good but i'm just saying i feel that the internet is full of advices like that and it's like the Seneca said that good archer always, you know, good archer is not the one who uh, shot a lot of arrows and sometimes hits. Good archer is the one who shoot once and hits, and and that's that's basically it. Because I want to I want to show my knowledge and give advice to people who wants to listen to me and can ask questions and we can somehow interact but you know uh, speaking loudly or writing on the internet it's yeah it's possible but i think that the internet is full and the people usually don't have lack of the sources they can read or watch on youtube they have lack or understanding or lack of yeah, understanding how to fit those a lot of advices to their lives. And that, that's something I would like to help. Yeah, that makes sense. I think uh, there is a lot of content. That's true. Uh, and uh, But most of it is written with that, uh, you know, American smile and uh, maybe a point of view of uh, Ostravak would be uh, refreshing. But that makes total sense what you said. Where is, uh, maybe what is your maybe I can start tweeting about it for for beginning. That wouldn't you know make it that that complex. Yeah, yeah, and, that and that would be nice. Some Zen Lumir Twitter account or uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so. What is your coaching uh, website? <laughs> okay, so we transfer it from a blog to website, and I don't have one. I actually have uh, two friends kind of struggling with time management and, and stuff around. So I help, started to helping them. The best way I can do that is to, you can take me to tea house and we can have some hookah and we can talk. Uh, but it's not always possible, especially these days. So 
I don't have one, but if you are interested, write me an email or contact me on Twitter. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, hi, Lumer. I also want to say something because here, uh, I don't know if you were uh, last session on Python Pivo, but Jirka Psutka also asked that uh, I, I am also very interested in this time management and something like this. And for me, the best is Pomodoro technique. I uh, shortly talked about uh, this uh, last session and I tried almost everything. And Pomodoro technique is so simple and it works for me uh, so well. So my question for you will be if you have some good experience with this also. And I definitely, after this, I will, I will probably contact you and we can share our knowledge and something like this. Or if anyone uh, wants to join us, we can <laughs> have uh, another discuss uh, session about this. And uh, one, one more point, uh, maybe a bit disappoint with uh, the Seneca quote about Archer, but only, only with this that uh, uh, on the opposite side from the modern managers or um, uh, or entrepreneurs, I say, hey, try a lot of things and fail often, fail often, and you will improve. And for example, Wayne Gretzky, one of the most famous ice hockey player, said, I missed 99% of my shots, but I shoot it very often. Yeah, so I missed almost all the time. But yeah, so, so this is only, I know Seneca is timeless author, yeah, very, very, very uh, good uh, thinking and quotes. But this one, I think in the modern world, uh, I, f from my point of view, I want to try more, more, more things and something like this. And doesn't matter if I fail for the first time. Yeah, it doesn't need to be perfect for the first time from my point of view. So what's your opinion about this? That's, that's a Perfect reaction, thank you for that. I will try to summarize up. First, Pomodoro technique, it's awesome. I'm using it every day. And I wanted to mention it uh, in this talk, but it it's you know might be growing endlessly and it should be still lightning talk. So I not forget, ah, I, I admit, I forget, but I'm using Pomodoro technique all the time and it's great because it helps me not to spend too much time on a, on a task if, you know, sometime, you go deeper and deeper and deeper and it never ends probably. So yeah, Pomodoro technique is great and it helps me a lot. If you want to, we can definitely, uh, you know, manage some meeting and share our knowledge about time management and prioritization. It might be really interesting. And the uh, first one, the Seneca quote, it might not be uh, perfect, but uh, Seneca said the archer, archer, Parallel with uh, in the context that somebody said, okay, we know the philosophy, we know what is right, we know what is wrong, and what now? Why don't we just can stand on the square and say it loudly to ev loudly to every people? We can just scream our philosophy, and we can you know, and it will always hit somebody, not not a majority of population, but it will always hit somebody. And that one person can learn something from us and the rest, we don't care. And Seneca responded the quote by the archer that the good archer always hit. So you should tell your words to people you know can get something from them. And don't say your words, don't waste your words on the huge audience when you don't know that people are interesting to listening to. That's what why I use that uh, quotation as a reaction to Honza's question about the blog, because I would like to give my advices and my knowledge to people I know they can grow with my advices and not just saying it loudly on a YouTube video or writing in for everybody and in the blog post. Because if you the, another part of that quotation from Seneca was that if you do it, if you say it loudly to masses, then it means that after some time, nobody will, you know, take you seriously because you are 
saying the same thing again and again and again in the same form because you cannot adjust the form to the person you are talking to. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks for this context. So, so valuable. I, I have a, one other question. So uh, that Eisenhower thingy you mentioned at the beginning of the talk. I'm, 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 I'm familiar with that. Uh, and I, some, I, I discussed it with some other people in the past and I found out that actually for some people, sometimes including me, it is not that easy to, um, to actually differ what, what is urgent and what is important because during our day or particularly work day, we do a lot of stuff with different levels of importance or urgency. Uh, do you have any any advice on like how to prioritize prioritize in 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 between well very urgent things and a bit less urgent things but still urgent? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a hard task, really. By the way, do you know why it's called Eisenhower Matrix? It's a really interesting story. Uh, no, it's no. named after after the one of the American presidents. You probably know the name Eisenhower, and it's called Eisenhower Matrix because. Uh, he did it. He did this great and chose the right task to work on because uh, Eisenhower is famous because uh, he managed to finish a lot of important things which uh, were not that urgent at the time. Uh, he is famous because he was able to build a lot of highways and a lot of infrastructure in the United States because that was important for him but not that urgent, right? You can build, especially at that times, you can build a highway next year and nothing really happened. Uh, so that's why, that's why uh, this metric has his name. And the problem with urgency and importancy is really hard, but how I take it is that what's important means what's important for me i mean important things are important for me i want to do this i want to work on this project i want to do that stuff and otherwise if some for example uh, on the opposite side if somebody send me an email or send me a task or wants something from me and don't you know don't set up a deadline then it can wait it's not urgent and the biggest benefit from it i think is to not set deadlines for yourself just based just on your feeling that you should or you're supposed to reply to that email for example immediately it can wait for sure and if it cannot the sender should specify that he or she needs a reply from you by the end of the week or something like that. And that's it. If you if you don't do it when you're sending an email, you cannot expect immediate reply, right? So from to conclude that somehow, uh, the important things are the ones I want to work on and I want to be better on. It It's more or less, it's not just in work, uh, I mean, in your daily job, but uh, it's really interesting and important to distinguish between these two things. Also, when we are talking about uh, work-life balance, right? I, I think that you have a lot of important things to do and your daily job might be one of them, but it's probably not the most important thing in your life, right? right? You have a girlfriend, family, kids, you have to take care of your house, you have some pets and so on. So that's it. If you feel that your job is urgent and you have to do it right now and spend a lot of time, I can assure you that's not true. And you can freely go and spend some time walking with your dog around your house. And then when the important is done, you can take a look on what seems to be urgent. OK, thanks. And from the technical perspective, I mean, how I do it on a daily basis is that if something have, have to be done, you know, if something has a deadline, 
and then I'm usually trying to finish that before that deadline. But if something don't have the deadline, so I'm using uh, text in my in my to-do list. So I added the text that hey, this is the next step. I need to do it, and I have uh, sorted the list of next steps by the date I added the task. So the task which has the tag next step, and I'm taking them from the oldest one. So from basically the order I received those tasks. There's a comment in the chat. I'm not sure if you, you can see it, Lumir. Yeah, side note, an improvement Eisenhower metrics in my own Philips cube. The third dimension is I have budget for it. I don't have budget for it. Yeah, that's that's great. <laughs> that's, that's usually, and that's also a good idea. And I have tons of tips like this. Uh, for example, if you want to buy something and you really want it from, from the Buddhist perspective, if you buy something, it's a, uh, and you think that the the stuff to think you you buy makes you happier that's that's not true at all but if you have you know unevitable feeling that you have to buy something right now because it's so awesome you 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 need it and it makes you much more happier uh, just write it down to your to-do list and try to forget about it and get back to it in a month and if you still want to buy it buy it but i think that you can save a lot of money by, by that technique. I, I have one more question, and that would be, how do you fight the fatigue and, and laziness? Like, uh, well, for me, usually after work, um, sometimes I'm just drained, you know, and, and there are some easy options, like um, to play some game, for example, or um, uh, to just, you know, watch Netflix or just do nothing that will not give me anything just um a rest psychic or physical or i can do something more active so i'm i'm, I'm like throughout the quarantine and so on, i'm trying to incorporate a workout or just going outside more and so on because i'm basically sitting at home from from march in, in home office um but it's not always that easy you know to like to to explain to your tired brain that you should do something more active that will actually bring you more and uh, uh, and and make you feel better that evening or even the other day, you know, after you wake up, because there are always easier options that can somehow make you uh, more relaxed. But well, the question is if if it actually makes you relaxed. So, do you experience this, and and how do you fight it? If if so, that's a very good question. The the problem is is basically already covered in the lightning talk, but maybe in the hidden form. If you really want to do something and you don't have energy, physical or mental energy after the work, then you shouldn't be doing it after the work. I mean, if you really want to work out, do it as the first thing in the day. If you really want to, I don't know, prepare healthy food or if you want to I don't know, read, read a book, and that's all I mentioned before. But if you really need to do something you need a lot of energy for, even physical or mental, then you should start with that. That's, that's really hard these days. Uh, I mean, doing it after work is really hard these days because if you start working at 9 a.m. and you work till 5 p.m., then it's dark outside, right? And nobody wants to go uh, on a jog when it's raining and it's dark and it's cold and it's uh, such a shit condition. So I'm sitting here and watching Netflix. So if you really want to do something like that, you should start your day with that. I mean, and it's the same thing in your, in your job. It's uh, usually called eat the rock or eat the frog. Uh, it's doing the first, do, doing the most important and usually a task you were procrastinating the most <laughs> as a first thing every day if you uh, it's usually not about uh, just about things you really want to do as i really want to be uh, healthy and fit so i really want to so i'm going to for a jog every morning but even if i want i would still do it because it's it's a mental setting that you for example 
uh, I would like to be fit. I would like to be healthy. So going on some workout or running and so on, it's really important for me. And if, if it, even I would hate it, and I sometimes really, really do, that's the first thing every day I do, which means that even if I wouldn't do anything else in that day, the day is successful because I did that one thing. I eat the, eat the frog, eat the rock, whatever you call it. So, and usually you have something like that in your personal life, like uh, working out or, or doing or calling your mother and listen to all that complaints. Or, and you have something very similar probably in your job. That's something you really don't want to do, but you know you, you should that's the call to mother, or you have to, because you have tasks from your boss. And that the best thing is to do it as a first thing, we, without any opportunity to procrastinate. I mean, do it as a really first thing, even without you open an email, you start your Google chat or anything else, do the first thing, the frog or the rock, and you can also schedule it, you know, the day before. And after that, even if you spend the rest of the day watching Netflix, doesn't matter. You did that one thing, the, you ate the frog. What else you want to do? Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, okay, well, I, I assume that a, a lot of us are fighting with uh, uh, similar things sometimes. So apparently we have uh, an aspiring coach here. So does anyone have any any other questions so I can ask infinitely so <laughs> that's actually good because it means that you want to be better you want to grow that's that's awesome no one really that, that's fine they are probably shy yeah that's okay don't speak too loudly so i have a request uh, could you share the uh, slides i can i have to upload them somewhere it's it's a html file so it should be should be fine i'll do that and i'll add the link to do to the document of lightning talks All right, Lumir. Uh, I guess I will, I will just uh, get in touch with you separately, uh, and maybe even with Kuba, uh, we can we can do some call and and and, and have a chat. Uh, the the uh, and all of you can if you want to. I, I will show my contact info one more, once more. Yeah, and the presentation will be shared in the Lightning Talk document, so everyone has access to that. Yeah. So make sure you will just uh, save the URL. And I also see that the that the wild lightning talk appeared in the document so looks like awesome. one, one more and and, and Honza wants to uh try again so Lumir, once again thank thank you very much it's been uh, a pleasure Honza, what would you yes. like to tell us about <laughs> i have a really short lightning talk uh it's a true lightning talk so i think i i'll make Wait, it is it under five minutes you sure Huh? Is it under five minutes? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'll I'll really try, and if if not, uh, you can just cut me off. I just resigned on the timer, so you can you can talk. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I would I would be talking too too much. Um, nah. The only problem with this talk will be that it will be uh, without a point. <laughs> and it will be like too much information. So you have to really pay attention because I'll give you too much information. It's not like coming to a single point where you realize, ah, I should do this. No, it will be like, you should do this, 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 and this is interesting and, and you should do that. So, <laughs> so, so, so tell me when should I start the timer, all right? So prepare the timer and tell me when I can start or right. I, I'll tell you or I don't know. You oh, I, I need to share a screen. Uh, oh, you have a presentation. Great. Uh, well, that's an euphemism. Uh, a picture, maybe? 
It's again just browser. A website. Okay. You made the website, right? No, it doesn't it's, matter. All right. It's tabs in my browser. <laughs> so, okay, uh, so you can start. Now. Can I start? Yep, sure. No? Okay, Go. good. So uh, this is not it. Uh, okay, so this is this is a page you may not know about. It's docs.pivots.org, and it's a documentation of Czech Python community, and you can find all in all uh, very interesting stuff there, like a guide how to organize a meetup uh, or everything about the Pivots nonprofit we have. For example, how the nonprofit can help you regarding many different things. Like uh, you can ask for money, for instance, if you do something for Python in the Czech Republic. So um, if you didn't know about this site, uh, check it out and see what's, what's there, especially this page. It might be interesting. Also, this site uh, is on GitHub. Uh, so you, if you have some tutorial, uh, tu tutorial how to organize something or whatever, uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can add actually your own text or you can update it. Or if you have ideas on how to organize uh, a meetup, uh, I don't know. You could add a paragraph here about how to do a meetup online. It's not there. So um, this is this is uh, an idea. Uh, and uh, as you see, there is one pull request because, uh, yeah, uh, there is a pull request about how to make a standard community website because we have some websites in the community um, like uh, pivots.org or python.cz. And I wanted to write a, a standard um tutorial how to manage uh, and and create such website uh so anyone could come and contribute easily and so on and there is a long rant and and a flame war about what are the proper technologies and so on and in the end uh, there is a comment uh, two hours ago uh about interesting stuff i just stumbled upon uh, you may recognize this blog. It's from Simon Willison, <laughs> my hero of the internet. Uh, and one thing he does is a da data set. Uh, it's, a, it's an open source tool, which is basically publishable, very user-friendly database. It's uh, more complicated than that, but it's actually very easy. And um, he made a website for the data set on top of data set. Uh, and it's very interesting. I really recommend you to read this uh, article. And I'm looking at, at it, and I think it's um, it might be a way to go with very simple sites which are based on some data. And it's the case of python.cz or um, pivots.org. Uh, both are open source repositories, and they work on the ba uh, on the same in the same uh, way that they download some data from the internet, they save it, and then they generate a static site from those from the, the, the data. And it's the same way uh, the data set, um, um, the, 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 the website works. So I think that's very interesting. And, uh, and I, I, I will explore it more, but you can too. And uh, I think it's, it's, um, it's a, interesting alternative to today's static sites like, uh, I don't know, Gatsby and, and all that React stuff, uh, which we Pythonists don't like that much. And uh, oh, and uh, there is uh, also one uh, pull request when, when I'm at the pivots.org repo, there is one pull request, uh, you know, uh, which is not merged yet, but I made a a list of members of our nonprofit, which is awesome. I think that it will be finally there. We settled the GDPR stuff and so on, and we can have a list of nonprofit uh, nonprofit members. So that's a bit of like heads up announcement, and uh, ask for reviews. And uh, you can see that it doesn't work very well right now, 
but one thing which works is there is a link uh, you can become become a member and when you click it you'll end up back on docspivets.org and there's explained how you can become a member of the nonprofit and anyone can become a member of the nonprofit so if you do something for the python community and you can be part of it like more and more and uh, kind of be able to influence it and so on i invite you to to become uh, a member perhaps so uh, explore that option as well that's it thank you honza you failed but it was a great talk but it was over five minutes <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thanks. That, there was a lot of people who failed today. <laughs> yeah, I think majority, but I think it's okay. Anyway, I'm um, uh, after another. Any 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 questions, comments on what 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 Hansa just told us? Because if not, I guess I will just uh, stop recording and uh, we can continue in even more informal manner if you want to. Good, so I'm stopping the recording now.